Yes, we are back with another episode of The Measurables, powered by Revolt. Actually, I, I say this all the time. You're powered by God, but we are brought to you by Revolt. Shot by my brother Cali Vision. Today we have none other than the lovable. I mean, his brother's lyrics are incredible. Voice is even more impassioned. From Philadelphia, my brother Pink Sweats. What's up, what's up? How are you, brother Sweats? Uh, after that intro, I'm amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I need that. Record it. Listen to it in the morning. <laughs> just wake up out of bed, just get that. Like, ah. Oh man. Hey, so I ask people this all the time, like as 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 a precursor to what we're gonna talk about. How are you and how's your mental? I'm good, man. I can't really complain. I feel like life is is a roller coaster. Absolutely. And I'm glad that it goes up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Sometimes yeah. Sometimes people talk about the downs, but it's like it always goes back up. So Amen. That's a beautiful thing. Amen. So I think by now everybody knows you're from Philly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But my question for you, you have such a prolific, like, love voice. Damn. And, like, I mean, it's, 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 <laughs> it's such a... Um, like, what corners of your upbringing led to such a refined lyrical palette? Because it's not just about love. It's, it's the way in which you describe it that's just like, man, that's prolific. Nobody never asked me that before. That's a, that's a good one. Um, I, I honestly, I, I feel like just growing up in church and recognizing the power in a voice yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, especially for the black community, that's where we get a lot of our roots and things. Mm -hmm. Whether that's reading, doing music, whatever, we learn a lot of that there. And I feel like for me, it was learning, and maybe I wasn't consciously learning, but just feeling the difference when this person sings and that person sings. Right. Sister such and such. Right. She got a different vibe. And it doesn't mean the other person it just like certain voices can make you feel a certain way. Correct. I mean, it's the vibration that they're moving on that some kind of way it affects you. And you're like, wow, like I was sad today and I came to church trying to fake it. And then she's saying, and you now you made crying. it. Now <laughs> you, you made crying it. Cause you're yeah. releasing. Right. That person has that kind of vibration with their voice. And I don't know if that's something intentional that they'd have, but for me, it was something I very much had to find my vibration through my voice yeah because i think man I'm, I'm not trying to be too deep but maybe i am no go deep i feel like the you know the conversations we have bro yeah, yeah, come yeah, on man yeah. the vibration that we live sometimes like even from when you're young they teach you to not speak up to not be outspoken and i wow. feel like that's a you know inhibitor to your voice so it's like you teaching kids to not be loud and, hey, they talking too much. Oh, sit down, sit down. Y'all doing too much. So you innately teaching these people to grow up to be adults wow. who don't speak, who don't feel, or they feel, but they're not articulating what's going on. So all the power is removed. So it's like once you speak or once you get familiar, you have, it's like as an adult, a lot of us have to get familiar with our own vibration because we're in character. Mm. So we're trying to mimic Someone else's vocal vibration. Right. And thought uh, vibration. Right. But it's like for me, I had to find my own thought vibration and my own voice vibration to be able to articulate my own message. Wow. So, yeah, that's how I look at it. That was a long answer to it. No, no. What, 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 so, so what I find amazing is when, when I was growing up in uh, Altadena, there are, uh, there, there were, we lived in a very mixed community. Yeah. And a lot of the black children, kind of got that, you know, like, in black households, there's something called the look. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know about that look. I do. <laughs> so, like, that look you would get, will it, it, it would level set you yeah. to just let you know, hey, bro, if I got to <laughs> say some words, I'm going to put hands on you. You know what I'm saying? But, like, a lot of my Anglo partners, they didn't really have that. Yeah. So they was kind of just kind of, like, running and, like, being loud and boisterous. And what that does is that carries over to, like, your adulthood. Mm. And when you're professional... It's no, it's 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 not a coincidence 
that a lot of our Anglo brothers, brothers and sisters, they like they it's like, no, that's not right. No, that's not right. <laughs> because they're familiar with that because, vibration. Exactly. Whereas we we've been told a lot of us, not all. Don't 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 you get too loud. Mm-hmm. Be quiet. Quit talking like that. Yeah. Or that's, just that look like that you just spoke of our parents, our community. Sometimes they unknowingly are inhibiting us like they're mm. they're the inhibitor and they don't even know sometimes because they just want you to stay safe you know right. what I mean? and sometimes that's that fear of i want him to be safe please like they start giving you those looks not just out of pure anger and stuff but they trying to teach you how to be in the real world but they don't even understand the real world correct <laughs> you correct. know what i mean correct they're not maneuvering life how they want but they're teaching you these things and i feel like Shout out to them for trying, but it's mm-hmm. up to us once we acknowledge, like, okay, well, they did their best, but now I have new information. Now you got to break that, you know, that mold that they kind of set around you they wanted you to be safe with. Right, right. Now, what I need to know from you is, for, is, is before we get into, like, where you are now, is there something in the water in Philadelphia, PA, <laughs> brother? It's such a rich musical background yeah. and it's a lot of us there because you know like you know the yeah. boat stops several places uh-huh. along our diaspora that's one of the places yeah. but like you know you come from a church i mean it's very well documented you come from a a, a, a very uh christian background so yeah. it's that secular situation like were you aware of the philadelphia international and all like the did you no. know about this i did not so man. so so how did this develop bro <laughs> that's what i'm i'm so fascinated with because I feel like, perfect analogy, you see a tree, let's say it's a, uh, I was just in Africa, or I shouldn't say Africa, I was in Egypt, mm-hmm. um, and I saw these like beautiful, beautiful trees, and we were riding up the uh, Nile on uh-huh. the boat, and I was like, those trees are so beautiful, I was just, you know, admiring them, and the guy came up, he was like, yeah, people pay a lot of money for those trees, I was like, what do you mean? Like, well, they'll come, point out a tree, pay like 15, 30 grand, and they'll get it sent to where they live. Wow. And if you think about it, that's really how life is. We're all taking something from somewhere else. Hmm. None of this is original. You know what I'm saying? So hmm. it's like we're learning from our parents and things. And I feel like I got lucky because it seems lost now, but... People probably don't remember. Everything came from the church. Everything. Everything. Community-wise. That's where we learned everything. All the greatest singers at a certain point, they had to come through church. Like, people didn't just come off the street and, like, had no checking or, like, proving that this person was good. It's like, even executives would be like, oh, I want to come see you at your church. Right. You move them. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. So, for me, I feel like I was lucky enough to get that experience to just be in church and not even on like a, I feel like I honestly probably missed a lot of the spiritual stuff cause I was so young. Mm. Um, but just how I reacted when I heard music for me, that was like, it made church worth it. Cause I didn't like going to church. You you young, you like, man, because hey, yo, we, we, we be in there all day, <laughs> all day, man. You go from one service to, and sometimes my parents, we didn't do a lot, a lot of church, but we did way more than the average person. Like right. some of my friends, they probably would be in like three services a day. We probably would do two, which is still so much. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Right. That's so much. You on a Sunday, you wake up early, eight, 7, 8 a.m. You yep. got to be at church by 10, eat breakfast, all that stuff. Bible, mm-hmm. Bible uh, they, like what they call it, Bible school in the, in a, yeah, I don't yeah. remember what it's called. Bible school. Yeah, so you do that. Like Sunday school. Sunday, Yeah, Sunday school. So it's like you do all of this, and by the time you get home, it's like 10 o'clock. And you got to go to school tomorrow. <laughs> you feel so gypped. You're like, man, like, yo, I just want to wake up. my friends having fun on the weekends. Not me, man. But look what it, look, like, look what it, look, look what came of it. Look yo, what came of it. I'm super, I'm, I'm genuinely, like in my, I'm 30 now. Like now, this the this kind of the age where I started to reflect a lot on like my journey throughout life, and I'm like, man, I'm so grateful for my parents, even though they didn't really know. They, my parents were young; they had me. They didn't really know, but they was like, I just want to instill this one thing in you. And for me, it set like a lot of 
boundaries in my life. Yeah. Where yeah. That gave me the strength and the courage throughout my life to just do what I wanted to do because I feel like sometimes the universe will put tests in front of you. Yeah. And you'll just keep facing that same test. Talk that. Yeah. And like uh, this probably switches topics a little bit, but outside of being a singer or a songwriter, for me, I view all of that as forms of entrepreneurship because I have to steward all of these gifts and talents. And Correct. I'm, so for me, the way I look at it is like my parents were my first testing ground. Yes. They, t- they gave me all these tools and then I had to use them. And sometimes I had to use them against them. Right. <laughs> because they built, like, my right. dad kind of gave me a lot right. of entrepreneurial qualities, and yeah. he would teach me certain things about, like, I remember when I was young, and I would say, I can't do something. He would get really upset. As he should, like, though. What? Yes. That's, you don't say that. Right. And I'm like, oh, well, why? but I can't. What I just say? Don't say that. Right. If you, ain't, if you can't do it, you will do it. And right. we don't say I can't. Right. And I would never would understand. I would just get so frustrated because I'm like, what else words can I say? You know, right. kid. Right. But I had to use those same tools against him. Oh, and that, that was the ta- that was the challenge of like it felt like a movie when it happened because I was like 18 and I graduated high school and I, I was kind of a lost kid because I always knew what I wanted. Uh-huh. And I read the reason I say I was a lost kid because that's how it comes off when you're young and you know what you want. You right. actually feel lost, right? Because it seems like everybody else is telling you what you want, and, and you're like, like no. I know what I want. I'm telling you what I want, <laughs> yeah. right? So it mimics the feeling of feeling lost because everybody else is going this way, and you're like, no, I want to go over here, right? So even though you know you're going the right way, it mimics that emotion of being lost. And I feel like for me, I got used to not needing validation. So mm. by the time I got 18, my dad would say certain things. And I'm like, nah, I want to do this. He's like, well, how you going? It don't matter. You told me that I can't say I can't. Boom. Like, well, what Boom. you going to do for money? I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he would be so confused. I'm like, you taught me this. Right, right. <laughs> you got kids, so it's coming for you, too. Oh, right. I know it's, you it's, still no, in them. No, it's it's already here. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I, like, like, I have two sons, one the tallest and the oldest, I want him to play basketball. He's like, I don't want to play basketball. <laughs> I want to, he said, I want to travel the world. I want to be on the debate team. I also wow. want to do stocks. Man, I how, love your kids. Like, man. how am I going to argue with that? <laughs> you can't. On the, other, on, on the other side, I got my younger son, got two cuts in his eyebrows like Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> this dude, he, I mean, he's totally with the shit. <laughs> I mean, completely with it. He told me the other day, he said, Daddy, I just want to be the best. Yo, listen, man. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I mean, like, I I share with them what I wish my parents would have shared with me. And they shared a lot. Yeah. But what you understand as a young adult is that your parents, a lot of the times, aren't smarter than you in something. They were just here before you. Mm. And that's what you got. That's what you got. Yeah. Because the world they grew up in is always different than the world. Like, the way you grew up in the world you grew up in. Mm-hmm totally different completely <laughs> like in every aspect it's like yeah. it's certain like lines that you can draw and they connect yeah sure but for the most part it's all different mm-hmm. and like the kids now they just have so much access to information that it's like you can't really tell them too much mm-hmm. that they don't know it's right like, you can't like back when we you know we coming up it's like people say because i said so oh bro you can't do that no more oh bro <laughs> like what do you mean because you, you remember so. that saying yeah, I heard it so much. Because I said so. was like, bro, that's like, <laughs> I tell people all the time, there's something called uh, a come to Jesus moment. <laughs> I know you've heard this. <laughs> Listen, the come to Jesus moment and the because I said so, those were synonymous. <laughs> Yo, because I said so was just disrespectful. Bro. Yes. It's, it's, it's like. I don't my, got the answers. <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, it's like you're in my mind right now. My mother would always say to me, don't you ever say to me. How come? <laughs> if I say it, it's gospel. <laughs> to you, oh, I am man. the Messiah, pretty much. Listen, but hold on one second, because because <laughs> I, I want to stick to the script because I only got you for like an hour. So I, I it's so much. I'm 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 so excited you're here. My question is, how old were you when you wrote your first song that you felt this is the one? Oh, I'm about to go off of this one. <laughs> 
bad. I probably was 19. 19? That was probably like one of the, I was probably like 10 songs in. And I don't remember the song, but I remember thinking, oh, yeah, I'm out of here now. Word. Do you it remember what happen. it was about? <laughs> no. Honestly, I was writing on someone else's song. So okay. It was, uh, ah, man. Actually, so this is how I found out about, like, Kenny Gamble mm. and all these uh, legendary figures in Philly. Because I think one of Kenny Gamble's daughters was working on a song with, like, some of the friends circle that I had. Oh, wow. And I was new to the friend circle, so I didn't really know anybody. I didn't know anything about music or anything. I just was, like, just raw talent. And they were working on the song, and then uh, somebody was like, oh, we never finished it. Like, they needed, like, a whole second half of the song. And I was like, yo, man, like, I tried. You know what I mean? I just jumped in there, did my thing, and then everybody was like, yo, that was crazy. Fire. And I just felt like this jolt of, like, yo, I made it. I didn't make yeah. it, but it felt like yeah. it. <laughs> I was like, yo, I'm out of here. Like, And then they started explaining to me, like, right. then I think it was revealed that I didn't know much. because they About like, the industry or about, about songwriting? About no, what? They, they was like, yo, this dude is nice, like, writing songs. I just had a natural knack for it. But then they mentioned, like, a name that, like, mm. everybody in the room knew. I think it might have been Kenny Gamble. And I was like, who? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And I was like, what? You don't know how you make music and you don't know? Yeah. So it was kind of like a bittersweet thing because I was like, one one second ago, y'all was like, man, this dude's awesome. And mm-hmm. then when I say I don't know this person, it's like, well, how do you even make music if you... Yeah. So, just, so, so, so listen, y'all, as a collective, educate me. Well, that's what, you know how it is. Sometimes we, we like to joke first before we get there so for me i was and i wasn't used to that because in my house we weren't allowed to joke on each other like that wow which is weird for no bagging no dozens we never did that so for me i didn't even understand like people really making fun like until later wow and i was always an awkward person to make fun of because i would never react so people would just be like man like, cause yeah. I really don't understand what you're saying, and I don't know why you're saying that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so it'd be like my mom, because my mom, when she was growing up, I think like she got picked on when mm. she was younger. So then when she was raising us, she kind of like would be like, you know, don't do that. Like, wow. and, my, and my dad was kind of similar too, cause he always wanted us to have unity. So he didn't like to see us. Yeah, going at each bickering other, bickering and fighting. So like, I couldn't even fight my siblings. Like, if I hit them, then I'm I I get in trouble. If they get hurt, I get in trouble. Even if I didn't do it. Wow. So it taught me a lot of responsibility, as and, and that kind of plays into my life now as a man. And I'm a, I'm not even saying that he should have done that, but I'm saying because he put so much on me so young, it developed like a sh- mental strength that I can handle a lot more. Versus, wow. like, my siblings, they were younger. So it's like when I look at our lives, I'm like, oh, that makes sense because. Yeah, you didn't get that pressure you I got. You didn't have the pressure. And I was like, oh, man. I, at the time, I was jealous. But now I'm like, I'm grateful because I'm like, man, sometimes you just don't realize those things are really building you to be that, like, the king that you're supposed to be. Even though Absolutely. it's not ideal, the conditions are not ideal, but the outcome is. So as a designer, there, 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 there are things that I see, and I'm like, oh man, I wish I'd have made that. <laughs> like what? I just want to know. So there is, um, there are these slides that Manolo Blahnik made. You got a picture of it? Because now I'm probably gonna want to get them. <laughs> Hold on one second. We way are, oh here we go. Look at these. Oh wow, yeah, these crazy. Okay. Like, I, I I I look at those and I'm like, man, I wish I would have made those first. Now I'm now I'm gonna do yeah, a derivative crazy. of these, yeah, naturally, because I'm like, nah, yes, sir, yes, sir. nah, nah, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm getting in on, yeah, this. yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> eat that though. <laughs> so I ask you that because is there like is is there that same level of intensity with songwriters where you hear a song and you like, oh man, I wish I'd have wrote that. Yeah, honestly, yes, man. I feel like what song. It's this is super random, but um, it's a song by John Denver. Mm. And wow! It's man, it's in my wow. playlist joint. I don't want to mess up the name. Who put you on the John Denver, bro? Bro, it 
Spotify did? Uh, take it's. See, this is why I always mess it up because it got two names. It's like "Take Me Home" or "Country Road," like whatever one. Uh huh. But yeah, it's it's a very famous song. Um, yeah. But I never knew he sang that song because that's like a song that a lot of people have redone. Um, yeah. So I was like, man, I'm listening to the way he's singing these lyrics, and some of them don't rhyme. A lot of them don't rhyme, but I'm feeling everything he was saying like I was there. And I just remember, wow. Like it's funny because I'm feeling it right now, just talking about the song. But wow. I was so used to like church music, which was to me at the time was just strictly feeling because I don't know what they talking about. Right. I don't know what the power right. of this or that of Jesus. Is. Yeah, I'm like, he bought the sunshine in my man, life. You like, all right. I don't get it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but I feel it, the voices. Right. You know what I'm saying? So by the time I was able to start selecting music on my own, I became like intrigued by words and trying to chase that whatever i felt at church it's like uh it's like when you see your first car that makes you excited when you're young you're like mm-hmm. man i seen that car and it's like you chase that feeling and yeah like for me lyrics that can paint a picture have always been like my go-to like a vivid picture of something that i want or something that just makes me feel like man i could relate to that strongly Wow. And that song is just like Country Road, Take Me Home. And I just remember, like, it just takes me to being young, like going back and forth to North Carolina from Philly, because that was vacation back then. We didn't really go nowhere. Mm -hmm. It's like Mm -hmm. North Mm -hmm. Carolina. Yeah. Back to Philly. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. 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 But but in, in, in those trips, were you happy? Or were you just like, oh, man, I'm not trying to go have no more cornbread? And- <laughs> no, honestly, I was super happy because it was something. I've always been an adventure, adventurous kid, mm-hmm. but I, we just didn't have the means for adventures. Right. <laughs> so right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. I always had this feeling that I was never supposed to be in one place. And I can remember just being really young. I'm talking about like seven and having thoughts like I'm not supposed to be here like, mm. where I'm at. Like, I shouldn't be here. Like, it just felt off to me. Like Wow. And I would think, like, I really, I would, like, talk to my teachers sometimes and ask odd questions. And at the time, I didn't realize it's odd. But I would just realize, like, man, they would even say things to me like, yo, you're you're different. Wow. You're, like, I would try to fit in with the other kids because I went to, like, a very bad school like it was all wow. i don't even know why our parents sent us there they should have just kept wow. us home but Are you- <laughs> <laughs> like wow. I, I remember asking my teacher uh about like I, I think i said something about life or or school like why are we here wow. and i remember her um her face was just like confusion like she really didn't have an answer hmm. and i saw that and ever since then, I, like, locked in that, like, nobody has the answers. And I probably was, like, nine. But wow. at that time, I just clicked. Wow. Oh, these people don't know nothing. But you can't say that kind of stuff to adults. Correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> yeah, correct. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, but I just, I think, I think we all have that thing in us. And it clicks at different ages, different times. But for me, it was really young. I just always knew the circumstances I was living in. Like, my dad, he always talks, like, because he's from North Carolina originally. And he like, yo, yeah, we grew up. Like, sometimes we ain't had no shoes. We'd be walking outside with no shoes. Oh, wow. He's like, but we didn't know we was poor. And I'm like, yeah, but I always knew. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> right. And, and I could tell that we didn't have much. Wow. And I, I could see the world for what it was. Very at nine. Long. At nine. Yeah, probably around seven, honestly. But I'm saying nine wow. was like the full scope of like, I'm do, I'm not doing anything traditional. Like, I knew I wasn't going to go to college. I knew that life was probably going to be a little harder for me because I didn't want to do the normal things everybody else wanted to do. Correct. But I also wanted to fit in at that particular time. So it's like... I, I I literally this is I'm getting chills right now. I remember sitting at my desk and I had this grandiose thought that I was building a story with my life. And how old were you again? None. 
I'm telling you, I was sitting in the seat and I was thinking like a movie, like how you see movies, like yes. people go from nothing to something. Yes. I literally saw that that young and I was like, yo, I have I literally said to myself, I have to make a story. So I was I would just wow. start doing bad in school because I'm like, who gonna care about the kid who always did good? That's what I'm telling myself. I'm like, if I always did good, then then I'm making a plan to like not follow my main plan. Mind you, I didn't even have a plan. But I knew that <laughs> right. it would force like Something the fight else. or flight instinct. Like either I'm going to win or it's all over. And I didn't know what I was gonna do, but that was just it was in my brain, and I saw it clear as day. So, so I feel like I lied to a lot of people when I used to say, like, oh, I didn't never know this was going to happen. I never knew how it was going to happen. Yeah, but, but you I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. <laughs> you understand? That right there, brother, was beautiful. Bro, that was incredible. Chill. That was incredible. So, 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 so you're a son of the church. How did you mentally avoid the tug and pull of spirituality versus secular. Cause I'm sure somebody says something to you somewhere. Wow. That's deep. You, yeah. you know what's crazy in that area? I always separated my life. I feel like church life was one life and outside of church was a different life. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and I, I also wasn't, uh, I wasn't the average kid, man. Like I was very open and honest with like, adults especially as i got older i would like go to the strip club be out all night yeah come to church early and people be like hey what you what, how are you what you was doing i'm like i was at the strip club <laughs> <laughs> like i was having a ball <laughs> like now i'm here you know what i'm saying but for me yeah. i always hated how church like people would come in and act different and i just hated that i, I always despised that like People changed their voice when they came in. Right. They act like they didn't just argue with their wife in the car. Right, right, right. It's like, for me as a kid, I was always a seeker of truth. And it's like, I just want somebody to be real. Like, wow. I'm tired of all the lies and, oh, go to school, get an education, get a job. It's like, but you did that and you just said you, you was crying in front of the church that you don't have a job. <laughs> right. So why are you going to teach me that? Right. And I'm not coming at those people, but it's just wow. like, don't try to teach stuff that doesn't work. Wow. I understand the fear that comes mm. with living in this world because it is what it is. You cor Of course, you want your kids to get educated, you know, and do these things, but you have to be honest with them. Correct. Because if you lie to them, it comes back to you later. Because say they do everything you said. And it don't work don't out. Work, then they're going to say, Dad, well, you told me. Well, yeah. Son, I ain't, what you gonna say? Well, I ain't really know. But why you tell me then? Uh, it's damn, tough. That's real. It's so tough. That, so so knowing that when you and your queen have you all when, when when you all have the children and you see one of them isn't as talented as the other one, you're gonna be like, boy, you ain't got no talent nowhere. <laughs> 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 to be funny, I would say that. <laughs> to be funny, I think I would say that because I'm like, oh, damn. My God. But I would try to identify what parts of me that they uh, have inherited through, you know, the traits. Yeah. And what parts of her they inherited. Because me, I never got encouragement like that. Mm. But, like, life in in the field of, like, hard work, that encouraged me. But, like, yeah. people never, like, nobody ever really, like, believed in me before I did something. Your so mother, so your, your parent, there was nobody in your community that nah. was like my, you know what? I'm lying. My uncle. Yeah, it's always one somebody. My, one bro. of my Come uncles. On, one of my uncles. I would say he was very instrumental in like talking with me about things, and as I was doing them. Yeah. But he he's my uncle by marriage, so technically, the way I look at it is like he got my blood. No, no, no. I was doing what I wanted to do, and I was coming to him. Like, I didn't, he didn't encourage me at first to, like, yo, yeah, you should do it. It was like I was already doing it, and I would come to him for information because he had already kind of gone through the music industry bumps mm, and, right. you know, he, I learned from other people's mistakes in that essence. And I shout out to my Uncle Tommy. Yeah. He's, he's my uncle by marriage, and he's technically my only uncle because I grew right. up around, like, a lot of women, like, all my, mm -hmm. my, my mom and her sisters yes. on that side. 
And my my dad, my, my mom, to be clear for the viewers, my parents are divorced. Okay. So I, I grew up in the house with my dad, but a lot of my time with my mom was all women. So it's like every weekend I'm going to my mom's, it's like five, six women. Commiserate. <laughs> yeah, they just. Giving you bars. Doing their thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I got like a crazy balance there, but. So it's like, it's it's, it's just like the smell of the hot comb. And the pink yeah. lustrous lotion. I grew up in a hair salon. Yeah. Like, I literally was, that was my first job was sweeping the floors. Yeah. You know what I mean? And my aunt would give me like 20 bucks or whatever. Because it's like, you just there. It's like, man, I might as well do something. So are <laughs> you, know you so, so, so are you like sweeping and like singing into the broom? Like. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was that. Honestly, I was, I was, I did not think I could sing, man. That is. Cr- I Bro, did not. Knowing. All of the songs that you put out. <laughs> it's crazy. It is insane to me that you feel that you couldn't sing. Uh, I, the octave I that you have. That way sometimes. I feel like God had to give me that because or else I'll be too out of control. That's my kryptonite. It's like I know so many good singers. Just in my family. Like I'm not even the best singer. Like my brother sing, my mom sing, my all my aunts sing, my grandpa sing. Like everybody sings. So everybody. it's like I always just felt like, dang man, I'm not really that good of a singer but i feel like my strength became in my words like how i articulate the lyrics what i'm saying it creates like a, a feeling and like yeah. understanding uh, understanding i learned this in church and i don't think it's exclusive to the church i think a lot of religions practice this um that like words are like spells right mm. so i kind of learned that through church and just like my parents being like, you know, I grew up in the hood. So when we were growing up, my parents focused on things that affected kids in the hood. They didn't focus on a lot of other things. So I was able to listen to most music. I could not listen to hip hop. I could not wow, listen to Wow, that answers my next question. What type of music was played in the home? <laughs> Gospel or nothing. Because really my parents didn't really listen to a lot of music. That sounds funny, but. But they were, but the majority of them were singers. But it's they weird. They didn't listen to a lot of music. So what? House. So so what music do you? Rem- are there specific artists? Are you like Donnie McClurkin or the oh, Clark man, Kurt Sisters? Franklin, dude. Oh, okay, stomp. That's my God. Yeah. Okay. He he was just he was a rebel at the time. Like, Absolutely. Old people hated him. And young people loved him. Yeah. So, and I was one of the young people at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. I love Kurt Franklin, and and um, I feel like for me he was uh part of my journey to show me that something different is possible because before he came in everybody was just singing the same old songs amazing grace mm-hmm. with a different beat mm-hmm. <laughs> and a mm-hmm. different tempo yeah when he came out it's like mm-hmm. i'm like yeah. yo what yeah is all this? my people say you yeah. can do that yeah 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 like absolutely he was cool like people start playing him in the clubs Bruh, and i would saying. hear the older people like i was at the club last night and it was Bruh. Like, you like bro when they play stomp <laughs> it was a, it, it was a club. Rest in peace to the Century Club. It was a club called the Century Club, and they would play Stump, and people was out there like <laughs> like like they was playing my Sipping prerogative, <laughs> like like bro, like they was playing my prerogative. Yo, <laughs> listen, it was on and popping. Man, shout out Kurt Franklin. Man. Shout him out. You know you know what's interesting about Kurt Franklin is that he doesn't sing. He's like the ultimate hype man. Yo. But the people behind him, all the all, all them thick sisters from, yeah, from they the Carolinas. And the thick brothers. And the, thick, and the thick brothers. Now, <laughs> how my people say. Listen, listen. All right, so you got it. So, all right. Um, we met via um, Charlie the Stylist. Yeah, and yeah. I made your, uh, your, your, your wedding tux. And we met in the Valley at that studio. I don't know if you remember. I was tapped in on you from 17 and at my worst. Word. I mean, like, bro, I was tapped in, tapped in, because I think, I think, at at, at the base of it, every black person has, like, has some type of musical talent. I think every I black think person that, does. Yeah, I, I mean, I like, like, do. I mean, like, we, we we just do. And how, like, you were just in there, like, in the studio, and like, you went into the control room, and and you were just playing this beat. I forget what the beat was, but I was just like, man, like, this dude has just talent just dripping <laughs> off of him. It was just it, it was just so easy. It that's my most natural language is music for me. I I feel like even my wife is funny because she'll be like, "You're so uh like." One day we were talking and and she was like, "You're so good with words." I'm like, "Am I?" Yeah. Like 
I feel like when I'm speaking sometimes that's a that's an unfamiliar vibration for me because I once I started articulating myself it was only through song. Wow. Because I feel like man this deep but I feel like when you're growing up in in the hood and stuff like that that environment is only catering to a certain emotion and frequency. Mm. And that's why I feel like we connected really well because you have a, a high vibration. And I feel like it's so unfamiliar when you meet brothers that come from, you know, the hood or inner cities or just, just the struggle in general. You kind of realize, like, man, there's a vibration that's trying to force itself on you since you were young. Wow. And it's like, wow, why is it that everybody caters to this thing or this way of thought or this way of just doing that's not conducive to themselves or their community? It's not by chance. It's trying to force itself on you. Wow. So it can perpetuate itself. And it's like, for me, I always realized being young that being a good person wasn't conducive in that environment. Right. And I was like. Right. But that's going to eat you alive. Yeah, or everything you do that's good, it's like a spin on it. Right. It's like, oh, if you, like, I, rem- I remember I, I gave somebody, like, $2, and somebody was like, oh, he got over on you. It's like, or maybe wow. I just gave him the $2. He said he needed it. <laughs> right. I'm not the inspector gadget to, like, right. follow him around. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it'll even make you, right. that, that, right. that. while we do have a lot of good in the communities that we come out of. Uh, yeah. You got a lot of ills, too. It's a lot of ills that are drowning out the good because Mm. it's like water rushing over everything. And it's like you'd be lucky to not get wet Wow! because it's everywhere around you. And it's you're going to have a bad day. And and I feel like for me, I moved out of the hood when I was 15. And that is when my life changed because I saw the world. Wow. I never seen the world outside of. My little area in Philly, and going back to North Carolina to see my cousins. That was it. Philly wow. to there. That was my world. When I moved to the suburbs, my brain clicked. I was like, "Like yo, it's this, on." This is one. I got sad because I was like, "Dang, none of my friends could experience this." Because wow. I just, I just had an awakening that like we've been living life on a different system, right? <laughs> like right. a whole different like literally the cool kids were the kids who didn't do well got bad grades because that's why i got bad grades because i wanted right. the attention of the girls right. i wanted to act like i was bad but knowing mm-hmm. i'm about to get a whooping when i get home these right. kids they're they not, not getting the whooping because their all. dad not even there correct you know i mean a lot of my friends didn't even know they dad i gotta get a whooping <laughs> when i get right. home but i'm playing Hard in front of y'all. I'm da, 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 da. Yeah. I gotta go get a whooping and come back and put this act on again tomorrow. Like, but when I got to the suburbs, I realized level wow, set, level set. Then everything started making sense to me. I was like, wow, my whole system. I was being, and mind you, I came from a pretty relatively good home, and I still was falling to it. Like, right. I'm, I'm mimicking people. Who they were born in a less fortunate circumstance, not having two parents in the home, mm. not having really anybody that even care about them. Like mm-hmm. t- parent teacher conference coming, my parents was always there. Right. They rarely saw other parents. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like I'm mimicking that, trying to fit in instead of trying to influence, which is crazy to me because that's really, it showed me one, this is how the world works. The hood is the lower <laughs> vibration of our thoughts. Not that everybody right. there thinks low vibrationally, but the manifestation outwardly. You mm, see it. Yes. All these abandoned buildings, yes. abandoned minds. Abandoned people. Abandoned people. Yes. Oh, that was deep. I like that. Abandoned minds, abandoned people, abandoned everything. You start seeing broken this, broken that. That's right. a manifestation of what's going on inside of the people that live there. Right. And, like, I would see the older people. It was a lady, literally my next-door neighbor. We shared the wall. She was, like, 90. Mm-hmm. And I remember she would always stop me. Why? I don't know. Leave me alone. That's literally I was thinking, like, man, please. Mm-hmm. She, she was just <laughs> rant, rant, rant. But one day she stopped me. She said, y'all young kids don't appreciate anything. 
And I'm thinking, wow. man, here she go with this old people stuff. But when she started to talking, this time I got it. She said, we used to have community cleanup day. Ooh. Don't, hey. She hit me Tell with it. that. When she hit me with that. Tell it. Tell it. It opened the door in my brain that was like, wow. Because so many of us in that circumstance, we would complain about the neighborhood, about white people moving in and and gentrifying it. But when this black woman who was 90 years old said to me, we used to have community cleanup day. It hit me. I was like, dang, we changed. Yes. Because she wasn't sitting around blaming no white person. She, they, she, she 90. If she anybody did. can do it, it would be her. She experienced more life than me. Right, right. She literally was like, we, community, wow. we used to clean this up. We didn't, what, what? So when somebody else come over here, she said, y'all little Nick going to yeah. be mad. Yep. But y'all did it. Yes. You know what's interesting about what you just said? So next to my, the, the street that I, I live on is a bridge. Keep in mind, I don't live on the street where the bridge is. I live one street over. Wow. But on that bridge, it will be like the most atrocious littering. People dropping beds off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Popeyes, Jack in the Box, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. But like, bro, like I would literally get up every Saturday morning and I will be out there picking it up. Wow. Me. And people would always drive up and be like, yo, I want to thank you for doing that. But they didn't help. And, I, and, 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 and that's what I would always ask. I would always ask, do you live in the community? They'd be like, yeah, I live around the corner. I said, well, you can come out here and help. <laughs> that sounds like the devil to them. <laughs> so let me tell you this. Let me tell you why I stopped. So my neighborhood is one of those neighborhoods that's being gentrified. And wow. on this bridge, it's anchored by two white couples. Mm. And one morning I was out picking up trash. And I was in front of one of their houses. And she was out there and she was talking to this woman. And it was literally like three pieces of trash in front of her house. And I had my little, you know, my, my little thing that cl- picks up trash. And I'm just waiting for her to just look at me and to just acknowledge. Just to say thank you for picking that up. She didn't even look up. <laughs> the attitude that she had was, you're supposed to be doing that. Wow. That's that's how I took it. So I said, you know what? As of this moment, <laughs> I am retiring from the from 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 bridge cleanup. And you know what's interesting? That bridge magically cleans itself now. <laughs> magically, right? magically, bro. <laughs> but be, 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 before I would go out there, bro, I would have two trash bags, trash can, all that stuff. Now somebody has gone so far as to put a trash can on the bridge. Wow. But I would get to, anyway. You want to hear something embarrassing? That What's I, up? Uh, I don't know if I ever really shared this, but uh, when I moved to the suburbs, it was this little white kid named Billy. He was our uh, our next door neighbor, and he came over. And I remember I was eating like some snacks, some fat kid snacks. You know, I'm a big boy, so I'll probably <laughs> eat a honey bun or some shit, right? Honey buns were incredible, by the way. Hostess, oh my God. shout Insane. out to Hostess. Shout out to him. Yeah. So I was probably eating that or something, and I remember throwing it on the ground. Mm. And he was like, why would you do that? Who said that? The kid. I was in high school. Bar. I think he probably was in, like, sixth grade. <laughs> and when he said that, I'm like. It checked you. I'm like, what you mean? He's like, don't you want our neighborhood to look nice? Wow. I was like. Damn. That's song. amazing. He in sixth grade. And I'm in high school. And I'm coming to this nice neighborhood. My parents move us, but it's it, it taught me that you can bring old stuff to a new place and you ruin it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I like I, I reference uh the Bible in the aspect of like uh the story of the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. Like that I feel like that idea of you have to go now, but I'm not gonna destroy you. You just can't stay here. Right. Because you're going to mess it up. <laughs> like, you got new, you got these new things that's going to ruin what I got going here. Right. You'll you'll mess around and kill the whole garden. So y'all just got to leave. I'm not going to, like, destroy all the people and things. But now you just got to move. Right. Got to move out the way. Because right. somebody else will appreciate this garden. Way more. Way more. And, and like, they're usually the color of this table. <laughs> they come in, bro. 
It's sad, it's sad when you see. I feel like a lot of people don't experience life outside of themselves. I agree with that. That to wholeheartedly, me yes, is why me and my wife we travel all the time, any chance we get, and I feel like that right there, traveling is truly God's gift because you start to see. It's no more assumptions. You get yes. to witness. Yeah. <laughs> like yes. when I lived in the hood, I physically lived in the hood. I have no assumptions about the hood. I lived there. I right. remember thinking I wanted to be a murderer when I grew up because all the kids I knew, wow. they older brothers was killers and, oh, he's locked up in this detention center. That's what we aspire to. And that to. seemed cool. My dad was not that. Right. Why do I look? I'm looking up to somebody else because the the numbers outweigh me. My dad mm. is there. They don't got no dads. So it's like, dang, am I going to act like I got a dad or I'm going to just... Survive? And they look at me like a square. Oh, you corny. For doing, for <laughs> oh, doing you going to the, call your dad. <laughs> for, for, for doing the right thing. But the, I feel like it, it made me realize why the state of our community publicly is how it is. Because the most forgotten person is a good man in the black yes. community. Yes. Yes. The most forgotten people. Yeah. It starts young. Because yeah. even the good kids don't really get no rewards in these schools. and They get a pat on the back. Oh, look, you got on roll. Good job. Yeah. Here's a cookie. Yeah. The bad kids going to Chuck E. Cheese because you got to entertain them so they don't act out. Exactly. Got the girls. <laughs> got Bro, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Listen, <laughs> we had a set of, I mean, like, we, you know, we, we got the blue boys and the red boys in, in, in Altadena and Pasadena. Okay, okay. And I remember, like, the blue squad. There were two brothers. Well, one was a Latin, a Latino dude, and one was uh, this black guy. And bro, their life was amazing. <laughs> at Elliott <laughs> Middle <were> School <laughs> and also at John Muir, bro, they were lit. <laughs> but the thing is, the closer it got to graduation, it really started to thin out mm. because real life was about to happen. Yeah. And when that real life happened, like it gets, uh, it get ugly. We have ventured so far off the path. I got all these questions for you. We ain't touched on none of them. Oh, let's do it. Let's we do it. sitting here I'm touching sorry. on community. Let's, you know what I'm saying? That's what we about, man. Hey, bro. Hey, and I and I appreciate you for it. How much does attitude play into lyrics? Oh, attitude. Give me context, or you just want me to just grab what so, I'm hearing. So, 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 when I listen to Michael Jackson, mm. Michael Jackson's whole love language was like caring for the people. Yeah, I never looked at Michael like he was banging them backs out. <laughs> <laughs> Which he probably was. <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, when I looked at, like, Bobby Brown, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bobby was breaking backs. <laughs> you understand? Breaking backs. You know what I'm saying? So, but, I mean, but that, 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 that's on a funny tip. But I'm saying in terms of, like, just sheer love songs uh -huh. that you make so well, the reason why I ask you that question is, mm. how much does your attitude play into what you're writing, because what you're writing is ultimately what you're singing, what people are receiving, what they're going to feel and what they feel is what you omit. Um, I feel like that's me. Like I'm literally in my attitudes towards the lyrics I'm writing. A lot of times I say about a good 90 percent. If it's me singing it and I wrote it 90 percent of the time, that's real to like something that I desire. Mm. And I feel like for me. I'm I'm a love child. Like I was born on February 14th. You know, are what I'm saying? you serious on Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day. So like I feel like Jesus. That's something. One. That's something I always wanted. I always wanted that like unconditional love and like just feel like. And I feel like when you come from hard times, you don't ever really feel that. And like my parents, I I, I hate to say it this way because I know that it wasn't their intention, but I always felt like, dang, I'm in the way. Because, like, mm. they were so young when they had us, I wow. could see all the problems. Whereas right. in, like, a lot of my friends, right. they didn't know what was going on in their house. Like, I could just feel it. I'm like, dang, like, we really, my dad pouring the cereal. My, <laughs> my dad going to see this. He's going to laugh. He would cover the bottom of the bowl. That's it. Like. <laughs> wait, 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 with cereal or with milk? No, with the cereal. As long as it covered the bottom <laughs> of the bowl. And <laughs> That's real, bro. Yo, my pops. Look, but he stretched that stretched that cereal though. Yeah, you know I mean, he really ain't have it, but he did yeah. his best. Yeah. You know what? You know what's interesting <laughs> about what you just said? There's this brother in my life. His name is Mr. Davis, and I grew up with his son. He and he, he uh, his son and I we play basketball together. 
But he and I, Mr. Davis and I, we still keep in touch. Yeah. I remember when I first started hanging out with his son, we would wake up on Saturday mornings and we would have like a bowl of cereal. Yeah. But we wouldn't have like the little bowl. Uh-huh. We would have the cake mix bowl. Oh, y'all was living. And bro, bro listen, Shout listen. Shout out to Mr. Davis. Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> this is what he said when he come downstairs. He'd be like, man, look at the size of that bowl. Look at the size <laughs> of that bowl. Because he was in essence saying, bro, that's, that, that cereal is not meant for that size bowl. You should have a small bowl, bro. Yeah. So that's so funny that you're saying what you're saying. Yeah. That I, is hilarious. I, I, want, I, want to, I want to love and be loved everywhere I go. That's something that I, it's always on my mind. Like, dang, I want to love people and I want them to love me. It doesn't always work that way. But right. that's something that I strive for. It's like, you know, people that I encounter, it's like, I really want to love them, and I want them to love me back. But I always try to show love first. I don't really ever expect Amen. it Amen. the reverse. Yeah. So when I do get it, I'm like, oh, wow, that was crazy. Yeah. Like, bro, show love, or she show love, whoever. I'm like, wow, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. So I I just want you to walk with me on this question. All right, all right. Uh, okay, okay. So you and I are sitting what is commonly known in the black community as a fade. Mm-hmm. Okay. How, how, how big is the fade to your life? Oh man! What does the fade mean to you, brother? Everything. I mean, because because the thing is, I've seen like you with the line. You give me like 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 <laughs> like 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 Gerald Levert. Right, right. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, like right, like right. It, they, like it's that whole vibe. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, brother, yeah. this brother is really on with the. And there's a picture that I posted over the holiday. You got the pink suit on. Look like you in Tuscany the somewhere. One you made. I, and brother, I, think I, I was appreciate in Spain. You. Yeah, I, I was in Spain. Flex. <laughs> no, no, no. Flex. You see me looking at the camera pink? <laughs> Flex. You can look right here. That, that's, that's yours. Brother, your fade was so tight. Oh, I was like, bro, it looked like, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like Jesus came down and touched your head, brother. Yeah, like, bro. like, like Jesus just touched you and just, he, he just vanished. <laughs> so tell me the importance of, because oh, man. I, I want to get to your love of anime and, like, literally, you were one of the first people, like, I have a son who's all into anime now. But, like, you were one of the first artists that I work with. And you was like, I'm looking to to tailor my my style yeah. to fit where I'm going. And I didn't understand it. So tell me, one, the importance of the fade. And then I want to know what fashion means to your life. Oh, uh, so the fade, man, I feel like the fade for, 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 for I would say, for <laughs> me, the way I articulate the fade is, it's class. Yeah. It's like a different, like, when you had that fade right, it's like it shows, oh, yo, he cares about his appearance. One, because if you go and get a cut, get the cut. Yeah, yeah, really get the cut. Really go in, get the fade. Oh, yeah, yeah, get that, get that. Don't do the $5 stuff. No, nah, like, no. Nah. I, I feel like, <laughs> my, <laughs> like you say Anglo-Saxon, my Anglo-Saxon brothers, they go to the hair cuttery. Yes, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I feel like for us that fade is like a, another dude to see you and be like, yo, he getting money. Yes. Like that fade crazy. Yes, the fade like, is crazy. Yo, who you go to? And it's a one, it's a community thing because it can start yeah. a conversation. Like for me, hair haircuts in general have always been a ma- major part of my life. But that fade, when I discovered the fade. When you discover hold on a second. <laughs> Is that how it made you feel? Yeah. Okay, okay. Like, even my girl, I was like, hold on, chill. Let me get my fade. She be acting different. I get the fade. She like, ooh. I'm like, yeah. I start talking deeper. Don't you? Don't you? It's different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so so Pink Planet and Pink Moon, they have a, a very strong anime vibe. Yeah, like sure. the art on the front is is just very anime. How does anime influence your visit your your visual cadence and also your mm. writing? I would say it opens my mind to possibilities because mm. I feel like as a physical person, it's only so much you can do. Right. right. So with anime, I feel like it opens the possibilities of uniqueness. Wow. It's like everything can be whatever you want it to be. And, like, just the style and the proportions of the body that you can do, it's interesting because in real life, it would look very weird. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's mm. like, all right, if I had, like, the skinny chest, wide hips, right, skinny legs, that looks weird in real life. But right. for some reason, 
on the screen or on that paper or whatever. It just has a different appeal. And I, that's something I'm always still curious about. I'm always trying to find out why am I intrigued by this? Right. And I feel right. like for me, it's I, right now the answer I've come up with is just possibilities. It feels like endless possibilities because you can articulate your brain onto this paper versus like I can't make me look like just anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the idea of anime is like, yo, you can build your own world here. Literally. Literally. But like, you can do that in real life too, actually. You 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 can, but I'm saying like literally I can I can eat batteries in anime. Right. You like <laughs> you can't eat batteries in real life. Right. Like right. metaphorically it can send a sign to your brain and like, yo, I need to eat for energy. But mm-hmm. in, the, in the anime, it's like he's just eating batteries. Right. Like, you can just play with so many things, and literally, it just fulfills, like, that inner child for me. Like, it's just like, yo, man, like, I got, I feel like uh, anime understands me. <laughs> it's like, wow. yo, I'm a weird person. Like, I think a lot of kids, we have, you know, these these things that we can't really articulate, and then you see it on anime, Mm-hmm. It just connects with you. You're just like, yo, yes. I just feel weird. Like, that just is my thing. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. I can't explain it. Right. So the other question I have for you, I have several, but I'm 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 gonna slice to them. Um, as an artist, what would you say your value proposition is? Mm. What do you mean, like a business? No, I mean, well, you know, like everything worthwhile has a value proposition. There's a reason why we connected. We connected because, one, I value your lyricism. I value your talent. Mm. I value your cadence, your intelligence. You value my attention to detail. Oh, my God. How I'm on point with my dates. Love and it. Not, and, 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 not, and pricing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> you don't exactly. hit me with the, yeah. mm, how much do I need for my rent this week? No. That's how much I'm going to charge. No, no, no. no. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You're very exactly. consistent. Yeah. And yeah, so for, for, for to answer that, yeah. I guess for me, I value most my 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 ideas because uh, those things they can change daily. But I feel like the way that I come about my ideas and the way that they come to me, I feel I feel like I'm a a portal. Ooh, like I feel like I was blessed enough to not have my portal closed because we all are portals from, mm-hmm. from being you. From from being our in our youth, we're all portals. We're born being portals for ideas and things to happen. But what happens is society yeah. drains you so much and they close the portal because they need you to do what they want you to do. Correct. And you can't do that if the portal's open. Correct. I never did that thing. Wow. That I've always done what I wanted to do. Mm. Which is like a child if you think about it. And I, I think there's a in the Bible they say it's, uh it's almost I'm I'm paraphrasing, remain as a child kind of thing. Yes. Like Yes. Because a child doesn't think they know everything. Cause they know they don't know everything. Right. But they're confident in not knowing anything. You right. see kids pick up stuff, that is a knife. Right. <laughs> Confidently about to cut their whole hand off. Right. Right. You are crazy. Right. Right. But that's what life is. Wow. You know? And yeah. for me, I'm blessed that my portal is still open, and I, I hope to stay that way. Now, growing up, were you into fashion at all? Oh, my God, yes. I love... I so, delve deep. Like, 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 tell me where you were in terms of, like, your fashion. What, what, like, what brands were you into? Or was it just, like, a look? It was, it was always a look because I didn't really have money, mm-hmm. and, I, and I always hated letting myself down. So yeah. once I once I started yeah. to look at brands like I really love love Ralph Lauren. Yeah. Love Ralph Lauren. And mm-hmm. and not cuz of the polos either. Everybody mm-hmm. wear those, but just because I love the brand, it always came off just looks like I was just like, man, this is luxurious. Like Yeah, man. Whenever I would see like older gentlemen wearing it, I'm like, this is a very distinguished gentleman. Right. Like he looks right. like he's doing something. Right. Um so right. It was Ralph Lauren for me, um, but more so it was a look that I was trying to, I guess, emulate or create for myself. And, yeah, I was always the kid dressing different. You know what I mean? Like, when I was younger, I would just go online sometimes, 
find these off-brand uh, shoes. It's actually a pair of shoes people wear today. I cannot. I don't know the name of them, but I had those shoes when I was in high school. So this was probably like 2009. Wow. I had those same shoes, but they were like this Asian company. They would sell on this off-brand website, and they weren't. A, it wasn't like a stamped name at the time. It was just a random like shoe, like no no brand or nothing attached to it. it but it was fire, fire. And I saw it, and I was like, "Yo, that's the same shoe." Oh my goodness! And yeah. I was just like, "Wow!" Like so many fashion things that I would, cause I would just seek out things like, especially when the internet came about. I'm like, "Yo." I would type in like little cartoon things I've seen, and then I would try to find something that matches that in real life. Wow! So like wow. satchels, like people wear the satchels. I know it's like controversial now, uh-huh. but to me, I had because I moved to the suburbs, I saw people wearing them. Right. But I knew people that looked like me didn't wear them. Right. This is like two thousand and seven. Wow. Black people was not wearing satchels at all. No. Wow. No, nobody was wearing satchels. Like, literally, in my school, I think especially, I was the only person that had a satchel that wasn't white. Was it frowned upon? No, because nobody thought nothing of it. No, I'm talking about when you would go back to the city. We just never went back to the city. Once oh, okay. Out. Oh, so you was like, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, good out here. <laughs> I, I got my confidence out here. <laughs> but, yeah, I, wore, I would wear the satchel. And, uh, and I, I, I got made fun of a little bit for the satchel, but... I realize that people make fun of things they don't understand. Correct. And then once they get it, they copy it. Correct. So, you know who said that to me first? There's a brother named Tyson Chandler. Tyson Chandler. Yeah, he used to, he used to play for, uh, he won a championship with the Dallas Mavericks. Okay. To play for the Lakers, play for the Rockets, play for the, the New York Knicks. He, he used to say that when, when I first started dressing him, he has his own style. Yeah. He's a very, he's a very stylish dude. But he's from like, you know, I believe it's Hayward, California. Very rural. I'm like, I never heard of that. I mean, it's, it's like extremely rural, but like he went to Dominguez and Compton, jumped right from high school to the league. Chris Paul, who plays for the Phoenix Suns now, yeah. was one of his teammates. He said that they used to tease him so bad about his narrow pants. <laughs> and now, bro. Now everybody got him. And now everybody on him. Yeah. That's how it goes, though. That how, yeah, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. Now, what part of the world influenced your style, would you say? I mean, you, 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 I know that you like anime, but I know you also like Ralph Lauren. So is it is it London? Because that's what Ralph Lauren mm. pretty much was pushing, a, a London aesthetic, but he was actually from the projects in New York. See, I have this belief that a lot of times people take their style from somewhere else. Absolutely. So the more I looked into Ralph Lauren, to me, this is my personal opinion, it looked like he mimicked Asian culture. Oh, because wow. it wasn't branded yet. Wow. Okay. And okay, I started to look, and I'm like, number one, Asian people be cool as hell, man. Bruh, listen, there was an Asian dude here <laughs> before you got here. His name is Caleb Lin. He owns a uh, a brand called Good Fight. Yeah. And I told him, he's like, "What else you got planned today?" I said, "I'm about to uh, interview the great Pink Sweats," and he was like, "What?" Yo, you he gotta said, connect this. He said, "Bro." That dude's voice isn't. I said, I already know. I, that's why he's coming. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, dude. I, I when I looked in when I started to look, and I'm saying Asian culture because I at the time I didn't notice that when there was a difference. I mean, mm. I'm saying that very specifically. Now I know there's a difference, but at the time when I was looking, I was just looking at Asian culture, right? And uh, pretty much was whatever was more popular. Whether it was like, you know, uh, I don't even want to say. Cause I don't, I don't want anybody upset me. Okay, but I would just look, okay. and I would notice like, dang, these motherfuckers is cool as hell. Like they had the swag, and like the way they was putting their fits together, and and I would look, and I'm like, dang, if I'm gonna follow my intuition mm-hmm. on how Europeans move, they always take stuff. Always. I don't think I know of anything that was originated in Europe. I don't know, except for maybe taking stuff. Hey, hate, hey! Hate. Hate. <laughs> I don't know. Colonialism. So I started thinking, like, man, maybe they got their style from here, and I really started to like look into Asian culture, and I was obsessed because I was like, dang, like, 
in America, we think black people are the coolest people on the whole planet. Mm -hmm. But also, we don't even look at the whole planet. So it's like... Talk that gospel, man. You see somebody wearing a satchel, you're like, oh, he's fashionable. It's like, they, people do that already. He just the first to do it here. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm not saying we don't have a cool aspect, but I think we hold on to the cool so much that we miss out on so much other stuff. Wow. What you... <laughs> Like okay. shout, shout out to you, by the way. As a I, father, I, f I just think that watching you, like how you work with your kids, and like you bring them with doing what you're doing. Yeah. I can't let that be slept on, bro. Because thank you, brother. So many guys don't do that, or they're doing it in a negative way. Yeah. It's like you're really kind of just exposing. Yeah. You're not telling them you have to do this or you have to do what I'm doing. You're just exposing them to the things that dad is doing it's like right. yo and you're giving them the opportunity to be proud through you which will in turn make them proud of themselves correct as they grow older because if you can't have pride in the people who created you aka your mom and your dad yes it makes it more difficult to find confidence as a person Cor oh my god it does because it's like dang the people that created me I don't even rock with them like that. Right, right. <laughs> so where does that leave me as a person? So I feel like shout out to you for, you know, you know, bringing your boys around and just so that they can be exposed to what's happening. They're not, you know, they're not completely oblivious to what you do. And I think that's special. My brother, I appreciate that. For sure. For I sure. appreciate it. I appreciate that a big deal. So this leads into my next question. As a black man pushing a narrative of love, compassion and care, in a world that craves the harshest side of us, how difficult is it to stay true and push your narrative of love? Well, the fact that you just phrased it that way, <laughs> I love it. Because you're even, it's like, I, once I moved out the hood, I realized why global image is important. Right. Nobody ever says those words together, right? Global image. Because nobody thinks that way. <sighs> Global wow. image is the reason why when you walk past the Asian person, you don't fear them. Eggs. <sighs> Global image Ooh. works the reverse, too. Yes, it does. It works the same way. It's the reason why any race of people walk past a black African-American or to be perceived African-American. Yes. They will grab their stuff. Yes. They will grab their kids. Yes. Because that's our global image. Yes. We don't protect that. And mind you, we're not... I always say this about the larger white community. Everybody that's white is not evil, right? Of course not. But when you're young, as a black person, you learn about slavery from a white person. Nine wow. times out of ten, yeah, your teacher was probably a white lady. Mm. right telling you about these atrocities that these europeans and then she'll follow up when you ask her what are you mm. oh me i'm right from the place that you just told you about wow. you don't fear them wow no fear strikes in your heart in that moment because the global image is good everything is marketing and once you get down to the idea marketing of marketing and putting money time energy into your global image as a community which we used to do Yes. We thought about that. That's why we, and also the el the elders, they understood we didn't build this. We 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 did not build America. We we were the labor. Oh, yeah. We definitely but built America. I'm saying in the context of we were the labor force, but yes. somebody else put these plans together. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's yeah. That's a total different thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like the person that, we're day quote, labor. unquote, build your house. Yeah. It's not their house. <laughs> you paid for it. Why are you chopping these bars, bro? So I'm saying the elders, they understood, yo, yeah, we were slaves, and yeah, my great-grandparents put that brick there, but it's not ours. Right. There's a system at work that we have to learn right, to play the game of life because life is like a big game of Monopoly. Yes. And yes. if you play Monopoly... And you've lived life, you'll start seeing similarities. Mm. Like, wait, wait, you can get a hotel here. You can get this. You can do that. You can stack these cars. You riding around the board. Because we're how big is the, we, it's only one planet. You go around it. 
around them right. and you collect that 200 if you want a government assistance yes and if you can't get on it do not pass go right right <laughs> you know what i'm saying right. if you were lucky to get in a position wow. to be able to acquire some real estate things like that but our global image is so important and we don't pay enough attention because we're the only group of people who don't have class amongst each other Ooh. that's not visible to the world think about this there's a difference between rich white people and poor white people. Absolutely. Socially, we group them all together. But in, in real life, we know the difference. Oh, you know yeah. when you see somebody who's like from the trailer. Oh, my God. And a lot of times we relate to them. If, we, if you get a cool one, you'll see how much similarities it is. You're like, dang, this dude kind of cool. But rich white people don't really associate with poor white people. Black people... And mind you, all money ain't good money. Hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. The point he is about to make is going to be amazing. (laughs) Please continue, my brother. All money in a lot of communities is not good money. You Now, black people, we operate on a lottery system for the large sum of us. That's how we get rich a lot of times. Mm. Lottery, music, and entertainment. Right. We don't highlight our doctors. We don't even know our billionaires. Correct. But we know theirs. Oh, yeah. I know who Bill Gates is. I know who Warren, but I can't name you that yeah. many, not by mistake, because I know a few. I could say, like, I've done a little research. I could say a name. But the reality is we don't elevate them. We elevate our lottery. And that becomes our global image. And who's our lottery? A lot of times it's people that don't really mean us no good. That's a, that, that's what was always interesting. I want you to earmark what you're saying. That's what was always interesting. There was a point in hip hop where everybody was Gotti was a, uh, you know, an Italian last name. And I never understood that because anybody would sense looking at any Italian movie, they absolutely despise <laughs> black people. Oh, my God. But we will, I mean, but bro, we will gladly hitch our talent wagon to the back of their names. Bro. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, I mean, like, it's, it's really but we, crazy. That's because we don't understand global image. The Italian mob, they did. That's why they don't exist really anymore. They all legitimized. Because they, 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 they understood. They exist in the shadows. No, I'm saying to the to the to the public. Like yes. you don't just be like, "Oh, that's a mafia person." Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've legitimized right. themselves and they set themselves up to do real things, right. aka what they always talk about buildings and things yeah. like that, construction. Yes, and you can't really be mad at them because what is America built on if not crime? And yeah, and yeah. But for us, we not building. We so, just get in the bag, blowing it, and showing off in front of each other. Oh, look what I can do, and look what you can't do. Ha, ha, ha. Die. Don't leave anybody any anything for anybody. You're not yes. leaving any information because yes. you don't have any information because you just got this money, and you're having a good time. Rightfully so. Yeah. If you give somebody a bunch of money, you'd be a fool to think they about to be thinking about the community. Right. If they've been, and, and it's all subconscious. A lot of times we as black people, we don't have spaces where we can speak openly and accountable to mm. what we do so it's like anything you say if it makes it to the social media it's like well why are you saying that because they really because you really believe that because you don't want your kids to become that right you really don't if you're a good parent you don't want your kids to mimic none of the music they listening to hey man l- listen listen <laughs> listen so it, it's, it's so interesting we're having this conversation but i want to get back to um I, I, my bad, man. So I no, no, no. That, 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 that's what I'm saying. I be getting so passionate about it. But, but, but I really care. So, so, so that's what I'm saying. So, I, I recently did a tape called Adult. Is this the one you sent me? No, nah, this is this is another one. Oh wow! So you in the you you be in there? <laughs> I'm like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he in his bag. I need to catch up. <laughs> listen, listen. So, adult is literally about adult situations. Wow. So when we're talking about adult, what is adult? I'll send it to you after we're done. But I asked, I posed the question, what is adult? Adult is if you're dealing with adult situations. So if you have children, Mm. if you have a mortgage, Mm. if you have a wife. Talk about that. (laughs) If you have a business, if you're filing taxes. Right. This is adult. Mm -hmm. And like, 
it all started for me. Like, like, like I said, every black person in some way, even if they can't dance, they got some musical talent because yes. we're musical people. Yep. I talk about like the, j- just the origin of like just me growing up. You talk about how you're in a reflective phase right now. Mm-hmm. I'm 47 years old. So like I you am, look good, bro. I appreciate What's that. The skincare bro? routine. That's what I, my hey, wife would say. I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> I appreciate that. But like this all came about because I'm looking at my children, mm. and like sometimes like I'll miss and like I'll play a uh, I'll play a, a jam that has cursing in it, and my oldest son, the one who wants to be on the debate team, he's like, "Daddy, I don't want to hear this. <laughs> this listen, <laughs> this is bad for my community." Wow. And the, you, how old is he? He's 10. He can't be, I'm about to say he can't be no more than 10. 10. So 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 I played him one of the one of the songs off of my uh my my tape called Tanahasi Coats. And he was like, "You curse in that song, but you're cursing with purpose." Come on. Man. So and I said he's 10. He's 10. He's this is what I'm saying, man. But 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 so so, so but but this is th- this is why I want to <sighs> bring it back to the way you look in anime, your the the way you present yourself to the world, a lot of black artists don't do that. And is that intentional that you do that, or is it just like is it just like this is just an expression of me that you all can get with if you want to, but if you don't, I'm good either way. I'm gonna tell you something. I never spoke on this, right? But I studied some of the greats, right? Mm-hmm. And in in different uh you know ethnicities. And one day I was watching Sting. Shout out to Sting. He's yes, awesome. Yes, absolutely. I was watching an old performance. Mm. Um, it probably was like the 80s, something like that. He was standing there playing the guitar, doing his thing. Yeah. Wife beater, regular pair of jeans. Yeah. He could be anybody, for real. If you didn't know he was Sting, he's a, he's, he's a regular looking guy, right? Yeah. And I looked at Michael Jackson. Almost the same era. He had on these this crazy fit, like <laughs> Captain Crunch something jacket. You've never seen. Right. It literally looked like anime <laughs> right. in real life, right? Right. And I saw the crowd on both. Wasn't that different? Hmm. Thousands and thousands of people. And I said, "Dang, for a black man, you have to do all of this." Wow. You gotta dress just, like this just to come here. You gotta be bizarre as you could be with the fit. People have to wonder about you all the time. Is he gay? Is he straight? Is is he this and that? <laughs> Who's Billy G? Right, like, right. And you have to be amazingly talented on top of all of that. Right? Just to, just to be next to this white boy with a white beater on and some jeans. Right. And for me, I looked at that and I said, "Dang, I can't really knock Sting. I can't really knock Michael. Wow. It's the people. Wow. We're all subconsciously." being programmed to demand these things. Mm. Think about that. That's yeah. deep because it's not Sting's fault that he got up there and did some regular stuff as far as like his attire. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think anybody ever looked at Sting for fashion. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that's not offensive to him. But No, it's not. Michael Jackson, to be Michael Jackson, had to be Michael Jackson if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, put his mom's glove on. You see what I'm saying? Her cardigan, so yeah, yeah. For me... <sighs> I, it took me a while to sit down and, and and think like, man, what really is underneath all of that? Non-threatening. Wow. 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 Black man, non-threatening. Yeah. That alone will get you through more rooms. Absolutely. Than the average person. Because a lot of us, we create this character to survive mm-hmm. and we carry it everywhere yes and you get upset why did they do that when i came in the room you look mean to the motherfucker right right you carrying that everywhere right the energy that energy the energy and he outwardly i believe was consciously becoming as least threatening to the larger world as possible because for some reason you never seen a very muscular, no, very very famous black man in entertainment. Hmm. Outside of like actually fighting, which is Mike Tyson, there ain't no singers that's like, like Tank. Nah, but Tank Tank is he's cut. He's not huge. Oh, okay. 
You know okay. what I'm saying? Like okay. I feel like Tank, he works out and he does his thing. He's not like he not like Mike Tyson. Like right, right, right. And I think these are their reasons. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. One, people who probably get that big don't probably really want to sing. They they probably right. focused on the gym. On working right? out. Right. But think about also the idea of fear is so man, it's so heavy on our community when it comes to us as men. That for me, doing the pink thing was a disarmor. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It was like, let me disarm because I don't want people to not let me through these doors because there are doors that they block us from. Oh, absolutely. And when I say they, I mean the people that's listening. Right. Because their brain has ideas about you because of your skin. And they might be black. <sighs> I seen something that somebody was talking about John Legend. Does he even make music for black people? And I said, wow. Wow. Doesn't beat his wife. I never heard him curse, really. I, I know him personally. I never really hear him call a woman out of their name. I see he's a good father. Mm -hmm. I see he's a good husband. Yeah. Does he make music for black people? That's wow. a question. Wow. And it made me think. So you now have taken the quote-unquote slave master's identity of you. Because what's the opposite? Wow. Murder. Violence. That's for us? Yes. Now, if yeah. people want to sit at home and say yes, then don't be upset when people treat you that way. Because that is now our global image. Yeah. Even to us. Because Even I make love us. songs. Yes. I should go to every show and it should be 10,000 black people there. But it's not. Because they always on social media saying, oh, murder, we got to stop the murder. We need to da, 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 da. But you don't support the people who are saying the opposite message. Wow. Other people support it. You know, I do go out to crowds. They don't often look like me. And I'm not upset because, hey, it is what it is. I make music for people willing to listen. But I'm calling a challenge to the black people who do say that they want to see change. Support it. Support it. Support because it. Because our global image affects not only us, but it affects the ability to grow outside of us. That's why everybody else collaborates. You'll mm -hmm. see an Asian chemist working at a white hospital. You'll see, you don't really see a lot of that with us because, one, they're looking at us as inferior because they're like, yo, at the end of the day, your ideals don't align with ours. And I'm not saying that everything should, but at a base level, being a good dad shouldn't be a white thing. Correct. <laughs> it Correct. should not. And Correct. mind you, statistically, black men are really good fathers when they mm -hmm. are there. Yes. But the ideas, we, we got to rinse our mind of these horrible ideas that like loving, compassionate in real life is not desirable from black men. It's like y'all want to chase something that don't want you or something right. that's broken. And shout yeah. out to all the guys who are doing rap and things because I feel like at the end of the day, these guys, they are just, in my opinion, they don't understand the power of their words. And 99% of the time, if they're successful enough and they do it long enough, they will. They always do. They always do. Always do. Because you have to. You can't live in this world and not see, dang, I've been saying shoot them up. And the neighborhood I grew up in, the crime rate was once this. And, and now they're shooting this, them up. And they're singing my songs doing it. Right. They're not right. singing Pink Sweats. Right. Baby, I'm afraid to fall in love. Do, 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 get him. Yeah. Did you get him? <laughs> <laughs> right. I never, if it happened, film it and send it to me. I right. don't think it ever will. Right. Happen. Right. These are ideas that we perpetuate and we reward. Wow. Your kids, man. I'm talking about your kids because to me, this these are the kids that need protecting Mm -hmm. From not just you, because you're just one person, but the community. Yeah. And they need to be supported because they end up getting overlooked so many times by the community. Because how many scientists do we know? Not many. For no reason. Yeah. Not because you looked it up, but how many times? Yeah. We only promote negative stuff. And I don't know if it's because of a lot of money is in negativity and a lot of attention. Yeah. But we have to become accountable to some degree where it's like, you know, we're not demanding greatness from each other anymore. It's kind of like excuse city. You know what I'm saying? And I, I grew up with a dad. It's no excuses. Yeah. 
Correct. That's why even when I came in, I didn't make no excuses. I was just like, yo, I apologize. I'm yeah. not going to sit here and give you all these excuses. I, hey, it is. I apologize. That's all I can do. Yeah. Because no excuse is ever good enough. Right. Even if I had one arm, my dad going to be like, yo, what that mean? Right. We live in a, a culture where you don't have a lot of people positively reinforcing these kids to let them know you can do whatever you want. It whatever. don't matter. Whatever. I don't care who against you. You go out there and play. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> if you're going to play basketball, if you're going to play football, if you're going to sing, if you're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a lawyer, I don't care what is up with you up against. And that is the mentality that got our ancestors from slavery to, here. to where we get to complain. <laughs> you get to complain. We get to complain. But, but, but so the, the but I'm the, sorry for that long. No, 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 no. That, that was great. But, but my ultimate question to you is, you know, you're in the structure, which is the industry. Oh man, it's brutal. And bro. there's and, and and there's preconceived notions about us in that industry. And you're breaking the norms. You're talking about love. I'm talking about love, and I want to share this really quickly. I got an album with a billion streams, or over a billion streams, right? Mm-hmm. Still a lot of people don't know who I am. Wow. A lot of people that look like me. A lot of people that look like you. That's and a shame. I make, I make love songs. And by all metrics, I'm successful. Mm -hmm. It's rappers that are bigger names than me. They don't have as many streams as me. Mm -hmm. But their message is easy to market. How do you market love to black people? I personally have thought about this because, like I said earlier, everything's marketing. I don't know how to market love to black people. But you're black, though. Exactly. But think about it. You learn from your environment. Right. Nobody never gave that community-wise to me, so I don't know what it looks like. If you think about murder rap and all of that, you know how that looks because we grew up in school. I beat you to – I do this. How many kids you see in the inner-city schools being nice to each other for no reason? Hey, bro, you okay? You, did you eat lunch today? Right. Sharing is caring. <laughs> we don't really do right. that right. on a broad level when we're young. So we adapt constantly, and it's like you building a, a entourage with it. Because good people typically, they're not in the in the idea of building because they think everybody else is like them. Bad people, and when I when I'm saying good and bad, this I'm, this not it's a relative. judgment thing. It's relative. it's relative. But the idea of like think about it, how many people you see at church, right? Let's say church in the black community is considered kind of a positive thing depending on who you're talking to right mostly women how many times you see dudes there mostly women right you you heard but you, you go to a gang all dudes. lots of dudes all dudes all the dudes you can imagine they all there so they let you know oh wow when when good people are doing their thing a lot of times they just focused on their goals and linking up with people here and there to you know climb their ladder and these are my couple homies three or four but the gang idea not necessarily any particular game but the idea is like yo we need to have numbers because that's the power and that, and that's where the structure comes in even though it's diabolical <laughs> it's still structure yeah it's, it's it's horrible in a lot of ways for for culture but i'm saying this in the context of how do you market when i'm and i'm talking about music how do you market love to black people you know what i think that they did a great job of doing it in the 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 60s, the because 70s. they were doing different things in real life. The 80s. They I was mean, actually showing love in real yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, Jodeci. I mean, like, you know, a Jagged Edge. We we have bred a heartless generation. Yeah. These a people, savage. These people are beating up old yeah. old people, yeah. killing old people, beating up women. And and I'm not even, not even to just highlight that. Then we killing each other. Other black right. men, other fathers, other nephews, cousins to somebody. We're heartless in this this era. Not me, <laughs> right. but the ideas that we have prescribed to. And maybe it's because of pain. I don't know, but I've been through a lot of things, too. So mm -hmm. when I'm going to be a murderer now and, and be like, yo, because I, you don't know what happened. This and It's like, bro, nobody don't care. Yeah. Try your best to fight for that little spark of goodness because that's what's going to precede you. We right. always, and mind you, even in the black community, at home, we always remember the bad person. Mm -hmm. 
I don't never remember the person that really did the right thing. They did good by you. Like, even the father that stays, will he get a tie? <laughs> That's what I get all the time. <laughs> hey, hey, look, but you but guess what? You're a man. And you understand what being a man means. Mm-hmm. It, does, it means, hey, I'm not gonna always get the applause. Yeah. But I understand my role. And yeah. I feel like a lot of these young boys are growing up and they don't understand what they're getting into. Right. They thinking like women because they was raised very similar to myself on one side around all women. So you have this woman's mindset where it's like, no, a man goes to war when it's time to go. You ain't trained. They sit, they ring the bell. Ding, 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 ding. You just supposed to go fight because you have people here that you love that you want to protect. And it's your duty as a man. To protect them. Right. And you wonder why women can't submit or, and that's like a trigger word nowadays, right? But you wonder why, because men are not many. Right. <laughs> men are not many. Men are not many. And like, even for me, I feel like a lot of people, they, they might see the colors, but like, that's a color. When it comes down to it, I'm a man. Like my wife, she can depend on me. She can be her full feminine self because it's like, he's got this. Right. And it's not even just a financial thing. It's like, yo, I'm going to cover her financially. Yeah, sure. But spiritually, emotionally, and certain things, it's vice versa. But I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, not what I want to do. Right. But sometimes I just want to chill. And like, don't, I'll be like, yo, I don't want to think about money either sometimes. Yeah. But you got to. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, well that, 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 that leads me to my next question is, you know, you work with such a right. I got about five more questions and we'll be done. Have you work fun, bro. We here. You 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 work with such a wide range of artists. You know, chain smokers, Bieber. You know, was your spectrum planned or is this organic? I say, <laughs> I say God's plan, because yeah. remember we talked about what I was allowed to listen to. Yeah. Right? Um. Somebody just hit me up the other day and they sent me a young artist. It's like, yo, man, I got this young artist. I want you to work with him. And I click on it. And he's got a gun front of the camera oh man and i'm like yeah and i text the guy back respectfully i'm like hey man this is not what i'm on right it's not what i'm about it's not what i'm about more importantly why are you but see i can't i can't do that because one there's no community to support what i'm saying at least i haven't connected with them yet and i feel like that's something that a lot of people do wrong is they go out lone ranger style mm. and then you get jumped yeah because you wasn't prepared so for me, I'm trying to now, I'm in the phase of reaching good brothers. Yeah. So that they know, one, they're not alone. Right. And two, that we can connect and we can build a community. Because while we're working, somebody else is on the opposite side working to destroy us. Right. To stop the community building, whether yeah. that's our families. I ne- bro, I never like I, sometimes I think I never want my wife to not be able to come to me about anything. Right. And I think about that and sometimes I look out into the larger world amongst my other brothers and I'm like, "Dang, you got kids that you don't see. That you don't see. Like you I can't even hang with you for real. You better not. And you that's better not. And, and like what you just said, why would you? That's the kind of level of accountability we got to get to because we were there at one point. Yeah. We lost it. You know, there, there, there was this term that, you know, one black person doesn't represent all black people. And there, there was a point in time where people started to get away from that. Like, oh, no, we, we know we, we that still applies. And, and, and listen to I, us. No, I, I, <laughs> bro, I was I, I was having this conversation with, with, with my manager. His name is John Rhodes. We have this thing called Den of Thinking Men where we do this. Yeah. And I was saying. As it applies to black culture, I feel that, like, you know, if you could imagine a sprawling estate, beautiful home, but all the gates are open. (laughs) Everybody could come in. Anybody just free You can come in. You you can come in, get you a fade. Yeah. Sing these R&B classics, sell your catalog for $700 and be good. Yeah. But on the flip side, Asian community, Jewish community. Yo, you got to come in on an honor system, meaning somebody has to vouch for you to be there. So if mm. you get into the party, 
this is proverbial thinking. You're in the party and you dancing, having a good old time. You splash yeah. and sweat everywhere. You getting, I mean, you like dancing all wild. The person who let you in the party is going to come and tap you, say, excuse me, you got to go. That's what, <laughs> other, that, that's what other communities will do. Uh -huh. But in our culture, this dude is in the party. He acting a fool. Not only is he dancing mm. like that, he got guns on his waist and dare for you to say something to him. Come on. Do you understand how crazy that is? It's insanity. But that's that's the condition we're in. We're, we, we are in the same. And I, it's funny because I reference a lot of stuff to the Bible. But just because I feel like a lot of stories are so relatable. It's like the children of Israel, they, they beg to be free from slavery, right? From under Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Moses didn't really want to do that. But it's like, oh, well, God told me to go and free them, right? He goes and free them. Then they complain. Yep. Well, at least we have food over there. Yeah. That's the condition we're in now. You have people, black people, who obviously don't truly understand where they come from. And I'm not talking about on the pleasant side because we love to go skip back a million years to being kings and queens. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but truly where we came from was through slaves. Right. A lot. And, 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 and struggle. And some people hate. That, but I love it because I sit in the seat of greatness right now. Mm. So I, I, and, but I stand on the shoulders of my ancestors because they didn't have this. So to, it, to, to not acknowledge right. thousands of years of slavery and not just in America. Some people think slavery started in America and it's a whole debate amongst the community. No, if you was a slave in America, nine times out of 10, you was already a slave in Africa. They right. wasn't grabbing all the kings and queens. Like, right, right. You know what? <laughs> We tired of you. You a slave now. Right, right. That was not the case. No, the kings and queens were selling you. Exactly. So right. nine times out of ten, we stem from people who were abandoned from the beginning. Wow. We were lost then. But us not acknowledging that, it makes it harder to move forward because you trying to be a you like an orphan, like on Annie, when they tell me, Oh, maybe he's a doctor, maybe my father, my mother. You no. Your 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 ancestors are slaves. Mm. And that's fine. Wow. Because you're not. You don't have to be. And you are everything that they, they went wanted to through. be. They went through to be. And you complain. Told my old man, this is worse than slavery. I, I hate when people say stuff like that because I literally, we talked about going, <clears throat> when we talked about going to North Carolina when I was just saying, I remember seeing cotton mm. the first time in my life. Understanding that this was grown. Like, we was right. at a funeral, yeah. and it was a cotton field. Wow. And my grandma, Helen, man, she was she had to be, what, 80? I go over, and I grab the cotton off the thing, and I was so impressed. I go, wow, look, look, look. This is, but I remember it was like a little prickle. Something nicked me before yes. I grabbed it. Yeah. And I'm like this, and they said, put that down, boy. Mm. Because it reminded them of something. Something hurtful. Hurtful. Something vicious. So when people say, oh, we, this just as bad as slavery, it's not. Nowhere we close. You can't do that. Nowhere close. You cannot disrespect your ancestors like that. We wow. have an opportunity of a lifetime to connect with each other, but we keep collect connecting with our lowest vibrations. We're not looking for our higher selves because we're not challenging each other anymore. Mm -hmm. And what you just did a second ago, that was a challenge because it made me think like, man, what would happen if we started to challenge each other? And like I have I have friends of all nationalities, right? And I remember me and one of my buddies, we were talking and we were talking about production deals in the music industry and how unfair they are and things like that. Based on color? <clears throat> well, he's a he's who's a white guy. But we were just discussing how people in the music industry They'll have these production deals, right? So, perfect example. Let's say you're an artist, right? I'm just a regular everyday guy, but I know a couple people in the music industry. I'll say, yo, you know what? Sign with me. I'm going to get you a deal with somebody else. So, now you got to pay me and them. Yep. And me and my, uh, my buddy, we were discussing, and I remember hearing him say, he said, I don't like working with people who do production deals with their artists because I feel like it's predatory. Yeah, it's a middleman. Because a lot of times they don't even have the resources to really benefit them. You're just gambling with their life, and you get lucky, and then you act like a big shot. Yeah, because you got the relationship. 
Right, but we don't even have that amongst each other. Because we'll do it to each other, and we'll watch somebody do it to 20 people and never check them about it. Wow. We'll never say, yo, bro, why you keep signing these artists and holding them on them contracts? Knowing you don't have no ability to take them where they want to go, let them free. But no, you'll hold them just in case something happens so I can get mine. Right. It starts with those mentalities amongst us that we don't check each other. Like, yo, bro, you ain't got to do that. Like, I'm a business person. I've had art, uh, artists signed to me before, and I released them. Wow. With their money and everything. Being there, like, I paid them to leave. Because in my head, I'm like, yo, I, I'm not banking on no luck. I'm putting the work and ethic and everything behind what I'm doing. So I'm going to get what's mine. Mm-hmm. If you become a billionaire, I'm a... Yo, man, that's amazing. I don't need a cut of that because I've connived you and held you into this contract by the throat. That mentality is disgusting. And the reason I'm bringing it up, because that's one of the few avenues black people have in the whole world that we're known for. Right. That we can really make it out and make an impact. People forget, or maybe they never knew. A lot of the civil rights was funded by us artists. Wow. And they made way less money than we make now. Wow. So that that should let you in on the mind of us as a people and a collective of artists. We collective don't care conscience. about people. Yeah, collective consciousness. We yeah. got way more. Wow. Like yeah. the artists were funding the civil rights. The artists, the actors, the the entertainers, they was the ones giving these people money to say, hey, man, whatever you need to push this agenda forward of our freedom and our equality, we got you. Yeah. We chilling now. Yeah. We got way more money. And, like, for me, I'm the kind of person, in my mind, I'll be wanting to donate to somewhere, but I'm like, who? who? We don't uh, got no leaders no more. Everything's like social. Whoever got the most followers or whoever right. can talk the best, I don't want to hear none of that. I want to know who's really about the people. Yeah. And it's yeah. so much harder to decipher now because the internet just opened up the floodgates. While there's a lot of good, yeah. anytime something new happens, it opens the way for those creepy crawling people looking for a way in. Oh, I can finesse like this. I can finesse. I can finesse. And you bro, got so many word. finessing people. I hate that word, bro. Finesse. I, I hate, hate it. I hate that word. But, you know, speak, speaking of uh, organizations, you know, BLM you know, came under fire because they, you know, pretty much took a lot of that money and just squandered it. And, 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 and even though as a business they were terrible, what they stood for was in the right place. There was just no follow through in terms of the business. But I want to segue. Mm, that's interesting. I want to segue. Um, do you have a dream artist that you'd like to work with? A dream artist? Ah, oh, man. I don't. I always used to lie and just say something when I was in the whole matrix of the label. They'd be, like, asking you that. But, no, I don't really admire anybody, like, on that level. Okay. Not because nobody's great, but I just feel like I'm on a path You're on your something own path. different. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. trying to do – I'm trying to show – everything I'm doing is intentional. And, like, the reason I came up here is because I had something to say. I hate coming up to places and I don't really have nothing to say. It'd be dry interview. Yeah. But – and, and and also the fact that we link how we link and the kind of person you are. Mm -hmm. you know I appreciate I'm that. Likewise. A classy gentleman. Likewise, brother. Like, Likewise. Take one to know one, my brother. You know what I'm saying? One. Take like, one. I, 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 I feel like for the for the viewers, the when I first met where all I could think was, how did he survive? <laughs> Like, I didn't think we could get to this point, being this kind of gentleman. And when I say gentleman, I mean a gentleman. Right. He's not coming in the room trying to, yo, what's up, man? Yo, wear this. Nah, that's ugly as shit, bro. Put the, like, he's coming in the room. Now, I don't even like to use the word humble, but an absorber of what's going on and how can I be of service. Amen. That's the Amen. most amazing. And he came in with the fits. Yeah. And it wasn't, he He had a belt on, his pants wasn't on his knees. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was about to be finessed. Right. 
Right. And that is the most right. crazy feeling when you feel like you're working with somebody that looks like you. That's about to finesse That's you. That's about to finesse you. But part of you don't want to feed into the the narrative like, oh, black people don't do good business. But then you get finessed so many times. And it's like, for me, you're actually one of the people that comes to mind whenever I do do business with my own people and they do wow. some funky stuff. Yeah. You yeah. come to my mind like, they all not like this. I yeah. think of you, literally. No, no. I mean, but brother, we've had this conversation. <laughs> you was like, bro, I just want to thank you for just executing. Bro, and you never, you always did what I asked. And I, and like even earlier, you was like, yo, I didn't get it at first. You de- you don't present problems to your clients. Mm-hmm. Because that's what real business is about. Right. Denny's don't come to you with their problems. Well, actually, Denny's might. <laughs> <laughs> Waffle House <laughs> Waffle House vibe But if you ever been To an upscale restaurant They don't come To the, to the customers With their problems Right And I feel like you yeah. in, this, in this In this scenario Are an upscale restaurant Thank you my brother A five star Michelin chef restaurant Because it's like Yo you're coming To be of service To your clients And it's You don't treat people Differently Like oh This person's more famous So I'm gonna be nicer To them it's like no. This is the. This is what I do. Yeah. This how if you want it by this time, I'm gonna keep it G with you. It's gonna cost you a little more. Yeah. But you you know gonna get it by that time. But you gonna get it by you this gonna time. It. It's gonna, gonna cost it. you more. And you let me know up front, and you give me options, and we bounce ideas. And I, I can't. I maybe. I hope. I hope a viewer connects with this. But anytime you 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 face some adversity, which with 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 us. Yes. Just try to remember. That there are people out there doing the right thing. And if you cut off that line, you're going to cut them off. Mm. And you can't do that. You mm. can't cut good people off because a couple people. I know I know that that goes against the, the so-called nature of self-preservation. But that's what love is. Love arrives at disappointment. Oof. Oof. Love arrives at disappointment. Right? Brother. That goes all across the board. I agree. I not agree. just for, not just wife, husband, or whatever. That's all across the board. You gotta give that love ain't there until they disappoint you. You know what I'm saying? How do I know? Right. Right. How do I really know? You always do everything I want as a as my people. How do I know I love my people? You know what I'm saying? When I really think about like the times that all these great civil rights leaders, some known and some not known. You think everything always went right? No, nah, nine times you, out of ten you, it all went you wrong. Probably, you think they probably was sitting around like sometimes like, man, these... Absolutely. I'm fighting for them. <laughs> and they got to... That's where love arrives. Love arrives at disappointment. And wow. every part of your life, that's when love arrives. Before then, it's just life is happening and it's just going your way. But love, the action of loving, it begins at disappointment. That's when the race starts. Right. You know what I'm saying? When the gun goes, doof. And you gotta go. That's when it starts. Right. Right then, when they disappoint you. That's right. the that's the race right, right there. Right. So we are at our final four questions. Well, actually, actually it's uh it, it, it's five. But these but I mean, but you you can rifle through these. Let's do it. What deceased artist do you wish you could have written a song for or done a duet with? Oh, Michael Jackson. I said Why? Because I feel like he just he just embodied image wise, uh he can't be held down. He can do whatever he wants. Amen. Amen. Um, what would you be doing if you were not a businessman? I probably would try to be a dentist. Say word. I'm obsessed with teeth. This is unhealthy. Wow. Wow. Advice for a young entertainer. Believe in you. What would you share with your younger self? Young sweats. We gonna be lit. <laughs> 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 all right and the last question for you the last question of the day is how do you find peace of mind uh my wife man amen yeah she's my peace of mind amen i feel that for sure amen amen well brother i want to thank you for coming and sharing that wisdom sharing the insight brother i don't know how much you know 
But I'm going to share with you that, like, brother, I have listened to all of your music. I have listened to all your interviews. And I was when I was when I was writing these questions up, I was like, it has to be something that he hasn't been asked before in a different <laughs> type of way. So I hope I wasn't intrusive at all. Nah, but like, man, honestly, great questions. I feel like the timing of this interview and the sit down, because we tried to do it before, wasn't the right timing. Right. For lots of reasons. But for where I'm at mentally and spiritually and just my life, I'm able to speak differently. Because a lot of interviews, I don't really get to go in mm-hmm. and really talk because I'm always, I was, well, I don't want to say I'm always, I was very hesitant to let people in on me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And I feel right. like as an artist, that is one of, that's like kryptonite for an artist. Right. Because we want to be loved. We desire strongly for people to like love us and adore what we do with the right. thing that we're good at. But we don't want people to hear us miss, make mistakes. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel mm. like for me, that was a big fear. It's like, man, I don't want to say the wrong thing. But now I'm at the point where it's like, I just see life for what it is. And I accept what comes behind being the good man. Amen. Not the nice man. The good man. The good man. Bad people never get a bad rap. Somebody could come <sighs> shoot a hundred people. His mom probably still gonna cry. Why are you locking my baby up? Right. <laughs> a good man can make a mistake, mm. and they'll lock you up for it. And everybody will say, "Damn." Right. Ain't right. that crazy? Yeah, it's very crazy. <laughs> That's very crazy. Wow. Like, yo, I put the wrong card into the machine. I didn't. I was, dang. You're a scammer. It's like, no, somebody. It's, yeah, our I, cards got mixed up. Yeah. Like, it's on camera. You can see they put their card in my wallet. I didn't pay. It. Man. Yeah. Scammer. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's like, it was a mistake. But he fed a thousand people. But he felt two. But, but he fed two million people. <laughs> fed two million people. He made this one mishap. And he was very regretful for spending that money. He didn't mean to spend it. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody that stole some money before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> you, you scammer. <laughs> Stop scamming. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> get them people their money back. <laughs> yes. Get them people their money back. But, brother, I, 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 I appreciate you, brother. And I thank you for your time. This Man, has appreciate been... you, bro. Oh, brother. Bro. Brother, not a problem. This has been another episode of The Measurables, shot by Cali Vision, powered by Revolt. See you next time. Peace. You start the fire.